Tributes to Chuck Berry have been coming in from all over the world after the death of the rock and roll legend at the age of 90. Well, let's take a look at some of those messages. Beatles drummer Ringo Starr tweeted, RIP and peace and love, Chuck Berry, Mr. Rock and Roll Music. Yeah, the singer songwriter Huey Lewis has said this. He wrote, uh, Chuck Berry, maybe the most important figure in all of rock and roll. His music and his influence will last forever. And Motown stars The Jackson said on Twitter, Chuck Berry merged blues and swing into the phenomenon of early rock and roll. In music, he cast one of the longest shadows. Thank you, Chuck. Well, joining us now from our London newsroom is musician and author Sid Griffin. A very good morning to you, Sid. Huge good reaction morning. from all over the world as people wake up to the news of, of Chuck Berry's death overnight. How will he be remembered in the music world? I, I think there's three three things Chuck Berry's going to be remembered for. He's arguably rock and roll's greatest lyricist. I mean, we had great performers such as Fats Domino and Little Richard back in the day, but Chuck Berry's lyrics were more than just a telegraph message of this is going on, this is going on. He he explained uh, 1950s America to the rest of the world, and indeed explained 1950s America to the teenagers out there listening to his records. He was a brilliant rock and roll lyricist, and such people as Bob Dylan and John Lennon are heavily in his debt to Chuck as, as lyricist. Uh, secondly, as a guitar player, Chuck Berry took a simple riff by a guy named Carl Hogan, who was playing with Louis Jordan and the Tim Panty Five. They had a hit called Ain't That Just Like a Woman in 1946, and Chuck Berry took that opening riff, that da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da, he took that opening riff and turned it into uh, a, not just a musical style, but a, a rock and roll lifestyle. So as a guitar player, when you listen to the Beatles, when you listen to the, the Rolling Stones, of course, but when you listen to the Beach Boys and the Flame and Groovies and, and, and even Ted, heavy metal guys like Ted Nugent, so many times somebody uses a Chuck Berry riff. He's probably rock's most important guitar player. In fact, I think he is rock's most, guitar, most important guitar player. And the third reason is when we think of rock and roll, we think of things like Elvis Presley uh, w wiggling his hips and James Brown doing the shimmy, which later inspired uh, Michael Jackson's Moonwalk, and, and Mick Jagger and Brian Jones and the early Stones being so outrageous on stage and so on and so forth. But as my, my, my dear friend, Mr. Uh, Mark Radcliffe said, he's the DJ on BBC Six Music Radio, Mark Radcliffe once said to me, the single most iconic figure in rock and roll is Chuck Berry doing that duck walk. And when Chuck Berry plays, uh, he does this thing called the duck walk where he, he, he's parallel to the lip of the stage and he, he goes across the stage bobbing his head and he's you know, sort of waddling like a duck. He's crouched down. He's, he's half the height he would normally be. He's crouched down with a guitar in front of him and he uses the guitar. He sort of looks like a duck or, or a locomotive moving forward. I mean, that might be rock's single most iconic images, as Mark says. So I think there's three huge things to remember Chuck Berry for. The duck walk, his lyrics and uh, his guitar style, which, we've all which you've just talked about. But how will his legacy live on, do you think, in music? Well, this is a guy that had one of his songs, Carl Sagan, the uh, astronomer, had one of Chuck's songs. He told NASA, we've got to have Chuck's songs put in Voyager when we send it out into outer space. So uh, somebody out there in the, in the future, if they're a greater race than the human race, they're going to find this Chuck Berry recording on Voyager and, and, and play it. And uh, I think uh, we're going to remember him as a brilliant, uh, influential musician. Right now, if, if, you, if you turn on the radio and listen long enough, even in this era of, of uh, postmodern music by people like Kraftwerk and, and, and the Velvet Underground and, and hip hop and house music and so on and so forth, if you turn on the radio now, sooner or later you'll either hear a Chuck Berry song or a song that has elements of Chuck Berry's style in it. I mean, we throw around, when someone dies, it's very important culturally, we throw around the word iconic like it was a brick in a street fight. And the fact of the matter is, this guy really is iconic. He is absolutely one of a kind, irreplaceable, mm. and we adore not just Chuck Berry and respect him for all his achievements artistically, but uh, we're, we're listening to his sons and, and grandsons and musical granddaughters as well these, these days. I mean, he, this, is, this is the end, the beginning of the, of the end of the 50s, guys. So just fast, ve yeah, just very quickly. Um, because how was his music received when it first came out? Because America was going through huge cultural and social change at the time. It's all well and good to now credit him as being the founder of rock and roll. But how was it received back then? 
I think the best way to look at it is no one single person formed rock and roll. Chuck Berry might have defined it for so many of us. Well, he didn't might. I'm, I shouldn't qualify at all. Chuck Berry defined it, period, for so many of us. That's, that's not in dispute. And I think the thing to realize uh, when we look back, I believe Chuck got started late. He wasn't signed to Chess Records until he was 29 years old. He got started late. But I believe had he started just a few years younger and gotten that show business break, and crucially, had he been a white guy instead of a black guy in the United States, I believe he would have been a natural Elvis and bigger than Elvis Presley is now. Now, that's ifs and buts and, you know, who, who can say. But I believe Chuck Berry ha had the situation okay. been slightly different, been mega. All right, we'll leave it with those ifs and buts. Sid Griffin, thank you very much thank indeed. You.